Hello and welcome to Eyewitness Report on Channels Television. I am Yomi Otaibi. This edition of the program features the continuation of the activities of the Federal Ministry of Works in Lagos State. The ongoing demolition of houses and other structures on the right of way for the construction of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway. The commencement of the payments of compensation to those whose properties are affected by the project as well as the repair works on three bridges in the state. Details of these and more shortly. At the commencement of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road project, the federal government promised to compensate those whose properties will be removed along the right of way. Keeping to its promise, government through the Federal Ministry of Works has commenced the payment of compensation. The Minister of Works also embarked on a routine inspection of the under-deck repairs at Edo Bridge, Carter Bridge and the Third Mainland Bridge in Lagos. The Minister of Works and some officials of the Ministry embark on what appears to be a tour of Manitula Beach at the Oniru waterfront where the demolition is expected to commence. The exercise begins shortly after the inspection of the area and measurements taken. Since the demolition was flagged off by the minister, it has been non-stop. Here we are because the project stopped because of uh, lack of bridge demolition. And I want to commend the likes of uh, Bolaji. Uh, incidentally, from kilometer zero to four, from what I'm saying, is the only one that is majorly affected. That's the only infrastructure I can see uh, that is affected. But it's been very wonderful, you know, quite uh, commendable. He has uh, commended Mr. President very highly for uh, the dream of this coastal route for the actualization of this coastal route and from the one uh, we told him that's infrastructure we go uh, he has been very cooperative landmark unfortunately has made so much noise about this i had to revisit the place i continue to say that none of his infrastructure is affected just the shanties have directed that the beach should be shut down from tomorrow and there is no beach. The place is owned by people that are filling it. And so at the end of the day, there is no more beach. And so what we are doing is to pass our coastal road within the right of way of uh, the federal government. The minister says compensation for those affected has been considered. I'm still here and I will be here working all through the week. So anyone we confirm, we will direct the contractor to pay. That's the that's the but the law did not say you must pay before you demolish. But this is uh, uh, President Ahmed Bolatini Bush government. You know, he anything he says, you know, he does it. We've said we will pay compensation, uh, and they were going to pay compensation. In his response, the chief executive officer of Manichula Beach, Bolaji Ario, recognizes the importance of the project for development, despite the inconvenience it poses to individuals and businesses. Yes, some of us are affected, no doubt about it. But some of us are not up to 0.1% of the millions of people that we enjoy 
the coastal road. That's why some of us like me and some others also has taken it to heart to also support Mr. President and the, Mr. And the Honorable Minister to ensure that this road come to life. It's going to be, it look difficult now, definitely it's going to be difficult. But I can promise you, if anybody has a very foresight, you will see that when the coastal road is finished, there are also a lot of development that will come to life. A lot of people are going to benefit from this coastal road as well. We are the only few ones affected. What happened to the entire of millions of Nigeria who go to apply the road? This is Lagos. We all know how traffic is in Lagos from moving from point A to point B. I'm very sure coming around here now, you will notice that there's traffic around the road because GTB is doing something around here. That's the traffic we're talking about. But if this coastal road has been existing by now, from Amodo Belo to here, we don't even take you two minutes. Yeah. So those are the reasons why some of us who have this foresight, um, foresight look that we have been praying for the Renew Hope. The Renew Hope is here. Somebody has to pay the price. And some of us are paying the, are paying the price in good faith. So we, we, are, we are human. We will feel the pain. But at the same time, if you look at the longer picture, you realize that um, it's the benefit of everyone is more than benefit of one person. Since the demolition started, the minister and his team have been visiting other areas where the coastal road will pass through, one of which is Eleko. Mr. Mahi and his entourage also inspect work at the end of the section one of the first phase of the project. We have uh, chosen another alignment that is not uh, you know, it's going to be parallel to the route that is going to um, the Lake Dipsy port at kilometer 47.47. And that's the end of section one of phase one. And so we are very happy with um, that decision. We use a flyover to fly over the, uh, the Dangote high tech uh, route that is coming from this Dipsy port going to a bay and joining the road that is uh, going from Lakey to Lagos being done by the state government. Now we've seen the filling has been done up to about three kilometers going backwards which means that they are free from Chenich 47.47 you know to about Chenich 44 uh, fully filled. We are very very excited with the quality of work they are doing with the speed of work and you can see the number of trucks I have never seen in any construction site where you have this number of trucks. It shows the commitment of the contractor. It shows that the contractor has a lot and a lot of equipment. It gives us the confidence that this coaster, you know, route will be constructed within the two terms tenure of Mr. President. And I'm happy that Mr. President has also directed me to start the immediate uh, design of the Sokoto Badagre uh, Coastal Highway. Uh, no, this one is not coastal, but it's a spur of the coastal highway. And uh, that one is 1,000 kilometers. We've started the design, and I'm very sure that as soon as uh, 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 FEC approves it, uh, we will be starting you know, at Sokoto uh, 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 sign, which is going to be the zero point. Uh, we also have another spot that is going to go from, um, you know, it's on uh, Enugu, Abakali, Kyogoja, going to Cameroon. And so we have that spot. It's about 361 kilometers um, going through uh, Otuko to uh, Benue to Nasarawa and ends up at Apu in Abuja. We are also going to be presenting it to Mr. President. And when this is done, then the coastal road, like we promised, is going to, uh, you know, circle the entire country. During the stakeholders' meeting, the minister says about 2.75 billion naira has been put aside to flag up the payment of compensation to some of those affected by the demolition. I assure Nigerians that so far, if there will be any activity that is lost, that we have opportunities between kilometer zero to kilometer 700. And so I bless Mr. President, I bless our country, 
and uh, it's my pleasure to unveil the new design route to the glory of God. And I wish to flag off the compensation from Chenage 0 to Chenage 3 in a total sum of 2.75 billion. That is very, very ambitious. Very ambitious. And it's my pleasure to invite the director design and the controller to call the people and uh, give them the symbolic amount agreed and to assure that before 1 p.m. tomorrow you will all get your alert as agreed. The ministry recently embarked on what they call a routine inspection of the under deck repairs at Ido Bridge, Qatar Bridge and the Third Milan Bridge in Lagos. The repairs became necessary to further fortify the structures against the lagoon tide, which is expected to increase in June. We've seen the progress of what we've made. We are happy with what we have seen and are promised to increase their pace of work against the incoming lagoon tide, uh, say in June. So we are happy with what they have done. We are working uh, on a number of bridges we inherited. We inherited construction work on the Coal Bridge, Marina Bridge, Liverpool Bridge, all done by uh, Build Well, uh, even the Independence, Independence Bridge and uh, Igamu Bridge. And um, on top of the Tormelan Bridge, yes, we have almost finished the deck job so we are extending the deck job and uh, we are also constructing CCTV and observation room. Uh, but then below the deck, we are working on the PS and the layman's uh, language columns. And then you now see the you know, peer caps. Uh, sometimes the peer caps are monolithic with the deck slab. Then you now see the pies and the pie caps and the piers. Uh, these are the works that are going on under the deck. We still have one major work that we are going to be looking at. We'll be doing a meeting with Beja to look at one of the uh, most serious and challenging jobs. And that is the work that is right below the pie caps. That's the pies and then the um, the beds. The beds, like I've always said that the pies are being held by skin friction of the sand. Some of this sand has been eroded over the years and the illegal mining also contributed to eroding of the, 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 the pies. The pies, some of them have also rusted, that's the casing. And the rusting has got into the concrete pies. Some of the reinforcement of the concrete pies exposed. So in 2013, there was examination of all the pipes of uh, the Todd Milan Bridge. In 2019, there was a repeat, but about 40%. And so we are procuring consultants together with Beja to look at what is going on there. We are setting what is going on. 
and about 68 pie, pies, pie caps. That's the pies associated with them. And so we are working with Beja and other international companies on how to design the remedies. And I'm very sure that within the next two weeks, we should be addressing the press on that. But we'd like to do what we did on Tomela Bridge, on Qatar Bridge. And as much as, you know, budgetary provision we allow, a lot of the bridges in Lagos, they need uh, attention. Uh, they need attention. I'm going to give them attention. And uh, not just in Lagos, in all over the country. We've considered a team. With what we're doing here, we are doing in Mutala Mohammed in Kogit State. So we construct a team that a number of bridges that are ongoing, some collapse on East West Road, some collapse on Enugu Port Harcourt, some collapse on uh, the um, road between Jos and the Plateau, that's why the Jos and the uh, Benue, that's the Shendam Bridge. Uh, we've gone very far in all these bridges. And so we're working on them and um, that's what Mr. President directed us to do and we're just doing that. Welcome back. In Ogun State, several communities are still in darkness after a rainstorm ravaged power infrastructure along the Okeola Itele Road in Ado Odo Ota, local government area of the state. Falling electrical poles on the Okeola Songo Ota section of the Okeola Itele Road in the wake of a rainstorm leaves at least 40 communities disconnected from public power supply. Vehicular movement hindered. Commercial motorcycles become the only means of transportation in Okeola. Ah, in fact, it was a very big and uh, serious breeze. The breeze was so serious that it was just, even my own house has, uh, is affected. And throughout yesterday, in fact, they had to break some places before they can even pass. And you can see now that no vehicle can pass, only Okada. And it's causing a lot of uh, go slow. And in fact, since morning we have not sold anything because no road for them to pass, no light, nothing. Actually, it's a disaster that happens everywhere. Likewise, I'm not actually around, but by the time I will come back, this is my shop. So I realize that since I've asked caused a lot of damages. That's what happened everywhere. So in, in Aton, in Ota, in Songo, likewise here too. So it's a disaster. 40-year-old Adepeju, a tailor and a mother of three, laments the effect of the rainstorm on her business. In a lot of ways. Let me start from road. As you can see, we don't have much alternative routes on this road. If you can see, if you look very well, people are managing to take only one route. This place is very hard for people to maneuver. Two, let me say there is no light. You can see tell a lot of people, if they didn't have light, they would not be able to use their machine. All these stony machines they are using, they use lights. If they are, if, even if you look at this road, most of the, the, fuel, the petrol station around, they are not selling fuel. We go a lot of way to buy fuel. It's really affecting this road. Even we have a lot of problems in this area before, like light. You can see no, no filling station. You, if you can come from this place now, you will see like four filling stations and they didn't have fuel. We go extra miles to get fuel. It's really affecting. Most of us, we don't used to have light before. This thing that now have happened now, it will affect us. I can't say how many months we use on this to have light. It's affecting us majorly because as you can see, the whole access road into this place have been blocked by these uh, fallen poles and uh, cars cannot access this place so it's, and the business depends on uh, the petrol filling station so if we can't have cars accessing it then we cannot make sales so that's why you see our gate shot. Residents attribute the cause of the falling electrical poles to their poor quality. I will quite agree because of not solidify of the of the planting of the poles because we discovered that 
some of the poles were not fully, I mean, were not well erected. So we were there yesterday, and in the rain, when we were coming from the church, we discovered even a lot of people ran. So we were just running, we don't know where to run to. We, are, we have to hide ourselves in one of the buildings there. So we saw, the, we saw during the rain, the, there was a heavy storm. So the rain was falling while the, the, the poles were falling down, one after the other. They were falling to the extent of getting to the extreme of the other station there, because I have a resident here. At the time of this report, the communities are still in darkness. Residents are hoping that the situation will be attended to quickly. Despite several appeals made to the federal government to provide another bridge that will connect border communities in Akankwa local government area of Cross River State and their neighbors in Cameroon, nothing has changed. The collapse of Oban Bridge, which helps to facilitate trade and other economic activities in that area, is still a concern for residents and motorists. A few weeks ago, movements along the Oban Bridge in Akangpa local government area of Cross River State were still active. The bridge connects Oban communities to the dense rainforest leading to the other end of Cameroon, thereby enhancing trade relationships among border communities of the two countries. Now, the only connecting route is cut off. The collapse of the bridge is caused by a truck which got stuck while trying to make its way through. The experience for motorists and travelers on this route is mind-boggling. Vehicles are stuck on muddy waters as you try to make use of the earth road. What we are asking for is help, please. We need the government to help us. We have been suffering for so many years now because of these breaches. We cannot make business. Business are not moving because of this breakdown of breaches. So we need help, please. It's an unfortunate incident that uh, has happened and uh, it's all about affecting the, the, the masses. So we are appealing to the federal government to come, prompt response to help to help alleviate people suffering about this situation. Even the effort of the Cross River State government to rescue the truck is not yielding results. <laughs> With the collapse of this bridge, it makes it impossible. If you turn around there, you see over 500 vehicles are parked there, trucks are parked. You can see the truck just sitting here. 
We have brought about um, 80, 80 ton crane to be able to drag this truck out. It seems, you know, it's as if it is not possible. We are left with no choice to go and look because the 80 tons we are brought here cannot even take it out. So we are returning back to Calabar to see if we can get about 120 ton crane that will take it up. But in the meantime, I beg the federal government to see how we can do a palliative measure first here while waiting to award the contract. I think it's the, it calls for an urgent attention. Yeah. Commissioner of Works have appealed to the federal government and the message will be passed across to our ministers and I believe urgent attention will be taking place to remedy the situation. I believe in a short while palliative will be done to give uh, the people of Akanka accessibility to Cameroon. The award has been given to the, the next bridge which is at Indembe already and the contractor has already moved to site and I believe with a, a urgent attention to this particular one those one will be able to work because by the time the contractor continues to come back to site now to come and work, they won't get access to that road, which means urgent palliative is necessary on this bridge so that they can get access to the next one that has been awarded already. But I believe with what has happened, this particular bridge, another one will surely be awarded. It is hoped that the Cross River State and Federal Government interventions on the bridge come on time in order to keep the trade relations among these border settlements going. The Eyewitness Report program gives viewers the opportunity to participate and be change agents in their communities. Simply take pictures and videos of activities around you and upload to the Channels TV Eyewitness platform, which is available on the Channels TV app from the various app stores online. Launch the app, check for eyewitness on the menu, tap and follow the instructions to upload the images captured on your phone. That's where we draw the curtains on this edition of the program. See you again next week. I am Yomi Otaibi. <laughs>